start the session of the time I got a lot from the important issue which uh, most of the ophthalmologists face today. That's uh, diabetic retinopathy, which is an epidemic which is waiting to happen. It's a ticking time bomb. Next slide. So as you all know, the India is the diabetic capital of the world. Rightly so, why? Because of uh, our near population of 1.5 billion, we are estimated around 34 million, likely to grow around 78 to 80 million by 2030. Among them, only 40-15% are treated, and there's a high prevalence of diabetic diabetes in urban areas. The uh, number of diabetic patients who develop retinopathy are variable. The urban study, which is done in Chennai by Shankar Netralia, which is part of the Ayosako investigator, revealed that nearly 18 to 20 percent of the diabetics develop diabetic retinopathy. So, the most worrying complications of diabetes, and we uh, asked the volunteers, they came up with loss of vision. So, 46 percent of them said this is the most worrisome complication of diabetes. Next slide. The blindness is definitely a challenge for most of the ophthalmologists because as I said, it's an epidemic which is waiting to happen. We have a line share and every diabetic is invariably affected during this course. And the prevention was never so better than cure. Next slide. So why I would like, I'll just give you a brief overview or a curbside view of diabetic retinopathy so that all the general practice physicians, endocrinologists and diabetologists can start screening. Uh, most of the patients are initially symptomless. They don't have any symptoms. They just identify on routine exam. The visual, visual loss is always a late symptom and it's often directed in advanced stage. Next slide. Here we can see the patient who had presented to us when he was 35 and he developed type 2 diabetes. And uh, initially, uh, we followed him about 15 years, 15 year median follow-up. Initially, he didn't have any retinopathy. However, at 10 year duration, he developed moderate NPDR. As you, as you can see, there's a profound leakage around the macula. And at 15 years, he developed florid and diffuse macular edema, which needs urgent uh, treatment. Otherwise, there's a definite loss of vision. Next slide. So this is the basic classification we all rely on. This is the EPDR, which is more commonly followed. However, for uh, general practitioners and diabetologists, this would be more relevant as they can classify into background retinopathy, which is most commonly seen. Pre-proliferative, these uh, patients right, need urgent uh, referral to an ophthalmologist and proliferative, definitely, yes, who needs treatment and intervention in here. Next slide. So as you can see, a fundus, when a normal um, general practitioner or diabetologist examines this patient, I would recommend most of the diabetologists to definitely have a look at the fundus of the patient in the clinic with help of a direct ophthalmoscope. They should be able to pick up these kind of microneurisms, hard exudates due to leakages around the macula, which need, uh, which warrant immediate treatment, and these cotton spots. Next slide. So again, uh, as for the classification, this is how I'd like you to, uh, I, I would like you to know that in pre-proliferative retinopathy, there are a lot of blood hemorrhages and there are some amount of macular edema. The cotton wool spots, again, doesn't uh, mean that the patient will develop proliferative retinopathy. It just, it's a sign of inner retinal ischemia, primarily due to inner retinal vascular supply going haywire. Next slide. And proliferative diabetic retinopathy, we have this florid new vessels. New vessels are very easy to pick up. Once they pick up with by a uh, general practitioner with the help of a direct ophthalmoscope, they see if they it is immediately he has to refer them to an ophthalmologist for an immediate laser treatment, otherwise there can be a profound vision loss. Here you can see the new vessels which are very friable, thin and they tend to bleed rapidly. Next slide. And an angiogram is always warranted on patients whenever we suspect the proliferative diabetic retinopathy as in this patient had late leakage leakages from the new vessels which are not evident clinically. Next slide. And we also have the advanced spectral domain OCT at our center which uh, whereby we are able to quantify the amount of macular edema which is present and we can also quantify the amount of macular edema which resolves following treatment with laser. Next slide. Click on the video please click on it. So I'll just give you a sample section view of the eye and how the diabetic retinopathy progresses. Here you can see the initial stages, there are multiple microaneurysms which start sprouting, which are saccular or pouchings of the vessel wall. Then they form these kind of edema with the hard exudates surrounding the microaneurysm due to leakage. Then end stage you have these kind of filiform vessels. These are new vessels which are very friable and 
they tend to bleed and here you see uh, vitreous hemorrhage which involves the entire vitreous cavity as a result of which there is profound loss of vision and patient even becomes blind if not treated early. Next slide. The slide for the Okay, this is how uh, uh, focal laser we do at our clinic. Please click on the video. So you can see it's an OPD based procedure. There's, uh, uh, no, uh, there's absolutely no pain for the patient. We just fix the contact lens out of the patient's eye and we use a green laser which is around 532 nanometer wavelength. It's OPD based so patient immediately uh, would, I mean patient would not have pain and he has to install some eye drop for one week following the laser treatment. As you can see this is how the laser treatment would look immediately after the laser treatment. You would have these kind of white spots which are the focal laser marks. Following 8 months you can see a complete resolution of the macular edema. So this is another patient with severe FBDR who had a profound vision loss. However, if you see the macular edema was not that significant. However, when we did an angiogram, we picked up macular ischemia. This is again an advanced stage here. The visual progress is very poor. In an advanced diabetic eye disease, invariably they have these kind of pre-retinal hemorrhages which can cause profound immediate vision loss and fractional retinal detachment which causes macular traction and significant vision loss. This is the early treatment of diabetic retinopathy is recommended this kind of band retinal photocopulation of all patients who present with uh, proliferative retinopathy. Here in India we don't wait for the hemorrhages to take place. We treat the minute they develop new vessels on the disc and head span. Uh, the ETDRs in the US they wait for the hemorrhage to occur. Here due to the poor compliance and the way we are genetically programmed to develop advanced diabetic eye disease, we do a prophylactic, this is called pan retinal photocoagulation. This is how the retina will look at the end of the treatment. Next slide. So this is another lady who had come to me uh, with recalcitrant diabetic macular edema. I had actually lasered her six times and in spite of this, her uh, uh, edema was not subsiding. Uh, she had a normal lipid profile. However, the edema doesn't seem to resolve in spite of multiple laser settings of laser. However, now we have a new treatment modalities and options like intraventrial uh, steroids like Ozodex, which is a drug eluting implant which once injected into the eye can stay there for six months and slowly reduce the drug. And we have other anti uh, the anti vascular endothelial growth factor. These drugs are also being noted to reduce the amount of macular edema and swelling. Next slide. So this is another patient with atypical DR who had actually been seen by a diabetologist in IIT where I consult. He had actually said this patient doesn't have uh, any diabetic retinopathy and he had just cross referred to me for uh, the verification. It looks normal to me for most of them. You will not be able to pick up the multiple hemorrhages. However, on a careful examination by an ophthalmologist with an angiogram, you can see a new vessel which is leaking over here. If these patients are not picked up early, they will invariably develop vitreous hemorrhage and loss of vision. So he has to undergo immediate uh, panel protocol operation. Next slide. And once he develops vitreous hemorrhage, yes, we can do earlier we were waiting for six months for the vitreous hemorrhage to resolve by itself. However, we know what are the consequences of vitreous hemorrhage. They can cause irreversible vision loss. Hence, we try to do an early surgery. Now we have a sutureless vitrectomy. Whereby it can be done as a day care surgery. They come in and we can do a, a 23 gauge or a 25 gauge vitrectomy and remove the vitreous hemorrhage and do an endolaser so that the bleeding stops. Next. So this is a diagrammatic illustration of uh, uh, how the vitrectomy, pro uh, uh, vitrectomy proceeds. Here we see first we deepen the vitreous, then we disconnect the vitreous from the multiple point attachments at the retina and ultimately once all this is trimmed off, what is left behind is the vitreous cortex which is eventually removed. This is a very simple procedure, however it requires a lot of skill and it is can be done as a daycare procedure. So what I would like to end this talk is that every diabetic is at a risk of blindness or vision impairment and all diabetes, diabetic patients require mandatory regular eye examination. There will be no symptoms initially so you might uh, be reluctant to refer to a patient because what I would like to stress here is initial it's always symptomless. You pick them up early like I've shown you a patient with atypical diabetic retinopathy who was symptomless who had good vision. However, an angiogram you pick up a new vessel. If you don't treat it, you will definitely have a severe vision loss. Uh, then I request a physician, endocrinologist and diabetologist to work in unison with ophthalmologists have a healthy cross-reference for them. A physician's role 
can never be uh, stressed more than this, never be more emphasized. He is the key person. He plays a major role in prevention of diabetic blindness because he is the one who caters to the bulk of the diabetic population. And I would re definitely recommend all the physicians to uh, go for a fantastic examination. They can do it themselves for all the diabetic patients, like how they do an ECG for their uh, heart patients and X-ray for tuberculosis patients. They should do a regular fantastic examination for all their diabetic patients. And it's uh, the only, uh, not only control but improve the quality of life also is mandatory because the vision loss, as I pointed out earlier, 46% of the patients said vision loss due to diabetes is the most worrisome complication they have. So this is what I require. The physician, veterans and diabetologists work in unison with the ophthalmologists have a healthy cost of food. Thereby we can always achieve the aiming for an improved quality of life and vision. Uh, we at Medford and Activision uh, have one of the most advanced diagnostic and surgical equipments for diabetic vitrectomy and diabetic retinopathy care. Thank you for your patient attention.